Well, welcome to the Goat Shed. It's Saturday morning, November 20, 2021. It's 19 degrees outside, which is about 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Slightly overcast day. Today we're going to do a roto target on this super spin machine. Now this particular roto target, we have done a video on this previously, but we might do one on this one to refresh people's minds. Bring it up a little bit closer. This is particularly bad, this roto target. Spanky's had a quick look at it, and it barely moves. Look at that, it knocks Spanky right off. Look at the spring there. That's an example of what not to do. So that spring's completely stuffed. That'll have to be replaced. They're a special sort of spring, so we've got to make one up now and fiddle around, thanks to someone's incompetence. But anyway, that's what we're here for, I guess. So look at the coil plunger it's all grungy and dirty we'll have to replace the coil sleeve the pivot point on the pawls is bad so out this will come out of the machine and we'll clean it all up in the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll show you the results the first thing we're going to have to do this one's a little different it's probably going to be easier see where the wires are soldered on in there okay uh, we'll dismantle that here and um, we'll desolder from these points here. I think it'll be much easier than trying to get the soldering iron right in there. Okay, so we've desoldered these wires here. Now all we have to do is remove the earth. So we'll take the earth strap off. And all, as always, don't forget to put those back on. It's very important. If you don't put it back on, things won't work. So out that comes. Then all we've got to do is, that's got a nut in the back by the look of it. There we go. And now we just have to undo the screws on the frame and we'll slide the, we'll slide the unit out. All right, we've removed all those screws now. Now we can take the frame and just gently lift it out. There it is, we'll lay it down. Now what we need to do now is undo the, the three screws there on the plate to remove that. Now, one thing we have noticed is that some of the, the numbers have been repaired before and we're going to have to pay attention to, to those again. I think there's one, there's one there, that 200. It's 400. That, 400, and there's one just here. There's another, oh, here's one here, that 300. It's got a screw in it as well. Yeah. So we just double check that and, and repair that. That's okay, that's not a big deal. Now, you don't have to pay attention really to where these come off because it's a random thing and away it'll go again. It's just broken off. Oh, there you go. One of the wires is broken off, which is okay. It's only a backup wire. We'll have to um, pay attention to the uh, snowshoes. Now. Yeah. They've really got to, the, the, if they're... the springs need replacing, we'll replace them. So that's not even going back yeah. up, that one. There's one there that's not even going back stuck. Up. You see that? So that's got to be... Yeah, yeah. so we've got to fix that. Oh, and look, filth, how, filth. look how filthy that is. It's been greased up. And, but that's okay. You can put, and we probably will put some PBR grease on that when we, um, when we finish. So now all we've got to do is take the, well, I call this the spider, that there. So two one eighth inch Allen keys and that, that. she's tight. Might be hard to get off, so we'll take that out. Look at that one. I've never seen them that bad. Look at all that on it. Look at all that crap. That's like maybe someone's put Loctite in that. They do come loose sometimes. So see if this other one's the same. You see some interesting things that people have done over the oh, years. That, that one seems to be coming out easier. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Just twist the spider off. Now all we need to do is take these two screws off here. Right, with those two screws removed, we can now lift that contact plate off. Now, just a, a point of interest here. Oh, there's a, a, a bit of wire broken, is it's it? A bit of solder. What we always do when we put these back together, 
We like to get a meter and check the continuity, especially of all these wire linkages. We've actually had them break off, and it can give you a bit of grief because it makes continuality through the back of the unit. Sometimes they look like they're good, but they're not. Yeah, we actually had one broken right off on the edge. And it was it, it, it appeared to be there. That was actually not on a ro roto target, but it was on a, a player unit. All right, well, now we're ready to um, do the mechanicals and clean everything up. So now it's a matter of removing the... Um, the nut here, the 7 16th inch nut off the back of the drive pole. I'm going to take those four screws out of the coil casing and remove that. And then we'll be able to turn the unit over. And as I said earlier, we'll change the coil plunger. We'll put the rest in the uh, in the bath. Change, uh, change the coil sleeve, I should say. We'll buff the plunger. And see all the, all the dirt there? That doesn't help. I always put a bit of lube on those pivot points. Always remember you can put a bit of lubrication on metal to metal in step units. It's actually in the book from the factory, if anyone has any doubts about that. But that's the way I was taught when I used to repair typewriters. And it's proven to be extremely successful. So let's pull this apart now. All right, here are all the parts all separated and removed from the machine. Look at that. All the, the plungers, filthy. There's your drive poles. They're bad on both sides. Just take those springs off in a moment and clean that. Now, the drive arm pivot screw, you can see it's got old grease and stuff on it that needs cleaning up. Now, amazingly, the um, escapement wheel is really tight. Look, I can barely turn that. No wonder it wasn't working. So that's all gummed up. It's starting to get a bit freer as I spin it. But look at all the all the grease on the end of it there. So that's not right. So this has probably never been pulled apart. That's why someone stretched that spring. And there's the spring not hooked on. You can see it's totally damaged in three places. So, yeah, we will definitely replace that spring. So we'll just remove that escapement wheel out of the frame. We'll put everything back in to the cleaner and we'll start to reassemble and see if, and make some adjustment to it. Rightio, we're just going to pop rivet that number 400 back in place. We did have to drill the hole out a little bit to suit the rivet, but should be all good in a moment. There it is all done. We actually had to change rivet guns. That other one seemed to be faulty. So we're just going to fix a, a few other ones up that have been there's, fixed. Let's bring washers on these. Yeah, they put screws in them. Where are we? There. There, they put a screw in it, but we're going to... We might even rivet them, actually. Might be easier. Mm. Yeah, probably. Yeah, then we'll clean the clean those holes out. The rest of the, the snowshoes are getting cleaned up with the springs, the ultrasonic cleaner, and we probably need to change a few springs. Well, here's all the parts came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Quite happy with the way that's all turned out. You saw how grungy that coil plunger was before. There's the escapement wheel. Just gave that a bit of a polish on the um, on the buffer. The shoulder screw for the drive arm. So if we put the escapement wheel in now, And hopefully it will it will spin well. Yeah, look at that. Barely moving before. Okay, so that's what you need to do to get these things going sometimes. So now it's just going to be a matter of assembling everything the way we took it apart, then checking for the adjustments, which we'll run through once we've got it back together. Okay, so we've reassembled the step unit. It's come up quite nicely or the radar unit, it's still a step unit though, regardless. 
one way all burnt. We've repaired the the targets themselves. We've put new springs in all the snowshoes, cleaned them, and we've riveted, pop riveted those few ones that were faulty. And I'll just polish those rivets a little bit better, I think, and then it'll be good to reassemble and we'll do any adjustments. Now, essentially, what happens with these, you've got to have a good stroke. We've put ranchy spins. And when you've got the stroke to the up, up, upmost limit, this should spin freely without any clicking. So you don't want to hear it going click, click, click. That should spin freely. Now, I've got to put the, the spider on the back of that yet, which I should do in a minute. And then we'll go through any adjustments. The adjustments on it are, um, are here. these screws but unless you really have to fiddle with them don't now you might notice that I actually had this played off and I marked where it come from I always mark critical adjustments that gives you an idea where to put it back now uh, essentially that shouldn't have probably left the from the factory the way it was and um, it should be all reasonably good to go to adjust the stroke on the plunger you've just got to move the screws here and Move it up or down depending on what you required. In this case, I've moved it up a bit, give it a bit more stroke. And that nut there, that's the back nut of the the plunger drive arm. So yeah, we're pretty happy with the way this is going now. Ready to ready to rock and roll a bit further. Okay. All right, we've got this all adjusted now. As I mentioned earlier, I, I like to mark the primary adjustment here. So I scrolled a, a line up there and I've refitted that bracket. You have to take that bracket off to get the, the escapement wheel out. Now, in this case, the two poles, there's a front pole, which is this one here, of course, because that's on the front. That's actually called the stop pole. Now that rides up here, and then the rear pull, which is the one at the back, that's the actual drive pull. That's the pull that, that we see that drives the arm up. Now I'll just do that slowly. You can see both pulls come up. You can see how the other one just lifts out at a point, and that one moves away so when it's under power they drive now the factory says that there should be a gap of about three sixteenth of an inch between there and there now like i said i put that back where it came from and you know that looks pretty close to me because this is working reasonably well when you're testing this i always put the the spider bit back on just to make sure the wheel doesn't move too much and you should give the wheel a little bit of movement so I've given that a little bit of sideways movement it's essential you do do that just a little bit of movement back and forward not too much just a little bit so we're ready now to put the actual targets back on now there is there are a, a adjustments to do on these um, if the drive pull uh, lever is um, engaged I mentioned you should be able to hold that up and it shouldn't click you just got to remember that if it is one of those one of those adjustments probably that one there that that adjustment is incorrect 
So you normally don't fiddle with them unless you really, really have to. Now I haven't replaced that spring at this stage. I've actually cut it because this is only to do with the return and it is returning quite a little. Look at the snap on that return. It's quite good. And remember, in the Gottlieb manuals there is the roto unit adjustment sections to follow. And there's all the part names in case you need to order any parts off PBR. There we go. So yeah, we'll put that back in the unit now and we'll see how it works. Okay, the roto target's all back in the machine. We had a few wires that were a bit, how do you do? So we've resoldered those on this area here, just hanging by a thread, so it's always best to take care of that. Ended up changing that spring out, put a stronger spring on to get the return happening, because that's the important part. Soldered those wires back on, and most importantly, we put the, the, the ground common back on here. So what we'll do, we'll watch it now, and we'll watch it spin. There it goes. Look at that. Now, of course, what's important is that bit of fallback, and that spring does control that. That falls on the contacts. There you go. So another successful roto target refurbishment. We hope that you can get your roto targets working as well as this one is with the help of this video. And once again, don't forget to give us the big thumbs up and like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. This has been another Goat Shed presentation.